Hello, we're going to be talking about the Copyright Designs and Patents Act in this video, which is a, like every piece of legislation in the UK, very, very confusing and very detailed. So we're going to try and just cover the, the general aspects of it, which somebody working in IT should be aware of. So if you are a lawyer, this will not be in enough detail, but if you're learning about IT, this should be. So this law is fairly old at this point. It was created in 1988. Most laws, by the way, conventionally have the year it was put into law after the name. You memorising that is not super important. It's much more important you knowing about what this piece of legislation says. So this whole law is about protecting intellectual property, shortened to IP. This IP has nothing to do with the IP in IP addresses. It's a whole other term. So IP are creations of the mind. So something which a human brain thought up is classed as intellectual property and so is covered by this law. So things like books, digital art, software, photos. Now you could argue things like books, well a book is a physical thing, right? But the idea about the story, the idea about what's in the book is what's covered under this law. So the actual physical thing is not really covered, it's the idea behind it. Right, there are laws to stop people stealing cars or stealing laptops. This is about stealing ideas. So, like I just said, really, this law provides protection for the creator of this idea if their work is stolen. Now, if you had your work stolen under this law, you are able, you are encouraged to request the person takes it down and they must take it down. Equally, you might request they pay you for use of your work. And if they don't comply, you are able to prosecute them for continuing to use your work without your permission. So you can make money from your work, of course, but equally you can force people to take it down. Now that can be quite tricky. Most websites have a tool you can use. So for example, on YouTube, you can copyright strike somebody, but not every website has that. It might take a very, very long legal process to get somebody to take down your copyrighted material. So this law is, I think, often a bit weak because you know it's actually quite hard to get people to stop using certain intellectual property and generally this prosecution isn't done by the police the police might do it if it's a very very widespread thing so for example if a factory was churning out counterfeit designer clothes well the police might get involved but for a person who has had their music stolen that might the police probably won't be helping out too much but you can still go through the courts Anyway, like every law, this is confusing and there are loads of aspects to it. Let's focus on just three things, which I think, just as a summary, are useful to know about. So copyright, with the C symbol in the UK. Copyright is actually an automatic right everybody has, which is there to supposedly prevent somebody else copying your work. So you can just stick the copyright symbol after a paragraph of text, after a YouTube video, after some music you've made, and it's a sign that nobody else should use it. And copyright expires after a set number of years, it's either 50 or 70, depending on what it is. It's why really, really old books can be republished without any copyright infringement. But the kind of key gist of copyright is, well, if you see something with a copyright symbol, if you are being totally uh, legal, you should request permission before using it. Either they'll say yes, they might say yes and charge you for it, or they say no. So you should always get permission before you use something copyrighted. There are a couple of exemptions, and this is where the law gets quite confusing, um, for what are called fair dealings or fair use. So for example, you playing a music, uh, playing some, a song for five seconds is probably okay. You playing it for two minutes is probably not okay. Likewise, there are some exemptions for education. So a teacher might be able to take a poem and show their class, which is fine, but they can't take an entire book and, and photocopy it for their class, that wouldn't be fine. So there is some kind of wiggle room to an extent. Trademarks are much more about brands. There are two trademark symbols. The TM is kind of the less strict one, and the R is a registered trademark, which means the company has applied and has been accepted for this. These are about recognizing a particular brand. So for example, the name and the logo. I think you see these most often on cereal packets is what I'm thinking about. 
So a particular brand, a particular color scheme, a particular logo comes under a trademark, which is similar to copyright. You cannot use it for your company if it has clearly been trademarked. And patents are probably the most strict out of all three of these because you've got to apply for a patent and they can be very, very, very expensive to apply for because you've got to have usually very specialist lawyers to do this for you. So they're all about protecting an invention. So if you've invented a particular way of designing a computer or a particular uh, product you want to sell, which is very, very specific, you can apply for a patent and the government can either say yes or no. If they say yes, nobody else is allowed to use that invention, only you are able to. So that's very strict, but very hard to get. And you only really get it for physical things, not things like software. Now this little picture is of actually a screenshot of a website from today, which I'll link in the description because I find it quite interesting. They basically publish all of the patents that Apple has applied for and won. And Apple, like today, won 42 patents for very specific bits of technology. Most they're probably not going to use, but some they are going to use and so they are trying to get protection for. So it's quite interesting to see what companies apply for. It might give you a hint into the next iPhone based on their patents, for example. So I'll put a link to that in the description if you are interested.